Alright you guys, I'm going to make a quick try at this. It is my first attempt to explain E to you. So, and that is the E that basically explains continuous growth. And let's just start off with the concept of continuous growth. So, I'm going to do that with um, money. So, if I place kind of a coordinate plane on here and just just kind of something so we can this would be zero zero right here and we'll say that is one but I'm gonna leave the rest up to you know some ambiguity right here we'll say that you start off with a dollar and as a person you find out that this this bank gives you a hundred percent interest on things so it goes for a while all right, and after a year, because the bank only puts it in every January 1st when you put your money in, after a year they give you 100% of your interest back. And so you not only get your original dollar, but you make 100% interest. And then another year down the line, your bank says, you know what, we're going to do the same thing again. And your bank gives you your two back. And since it's 100% of two now, you get an additional two dollars. Well this would continue and continue and continue. And what you're going to see right here is that there is kind of a natural curve here that would go to indicate your money. The problem with that being is that this aspect of the line doesn't exist because you would only have a dollar all the way up until the bank gives you interest. And banks do this. They, they apply money quarterly, biannually, but very rarely do you get money all of the time. So, big problem, because if we're trying to model things in real life, real things don't grow like this. Real things grow differently. Well, there are situations where you can, let's say this bank now says, you know what, we want to give you 100% interest, which, by the way, if you find, take them up on that because no one gives 100% interest. But we're now going to do it biannually. So if this would represent a year's worth of time, all right, now we're going to go ahead and say we're going to break that up into quarters. And, and I'm going to pick a different color. Let's pick a red color in here. So now instead of annually, we're going to do things biannually. Well, they can't give you 100% interest twice a year, but they can give you 50% interest twice a year. So round about here, the bank says, you know what, we're going to give you half your interest. And so you get half of your money. And um, then at the other end, you get half your money again. But here's the deal. Since I'm getting 50% twice, I not only finish that first circle, and, and let's go ahead and do it right here so I can show you what's happening. You not only finish that first, you're getting the same amount. But now this guy right here, this little bit here, this half a circle, has now been earning its own interest for half a year. And um, so you're going to get another kind of quarter of a circle. Let me see if I can adjust that a little bit on here really fast. I'm going to kind of mark that down a little bit. All right. You're going to get kind of this little bit of a blob up here as well. So, and as you can see, as we go on, I mean, uh, on this one, I would still have those two, right? But I would earn another 50%, which would be an entire new one right there. And this guy right here would earn a little bit more as well. So, kind of a little 50% of that. And eventually, the red ones would again repeat these four, right? But now 50% of all of this would give me kind of a little bit more. So you're going to gain. And what we notice, and I will try to show you how we notice that, all right? We notice that is as we break money up more and more and more, what we're going to get is we're going to get lines. And let me just pick a couple different colors in here. Maybe we can pick kind of a green. And as I apply money more and more and more, this curve, this curve that we're seeing increases. Now, what I'm going to try to do is this, is I'm going to try to um, 
kind of show you. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, suppose we invest a dollar. So let's take a look at what we would have kind of an exponential equation. So I'm going to go back to this. And we're going to write what an exponential equation is. So we got y. Oh, quick adjustment up. And you can see I kind of made a little bit of a mess. So, and I plan on going with this. So I'm going to clean up some of my mess, but I'm going to leave some of my mess on here. And um, adjust this back to where it goes, right there. Let's see if I'm in black still. So we got y equals a being our start. All right. B right there. All right is our um, our ratio. And if we're doing compound interest, what we really do is um, we we break our ratio up, and then we've got a x being our variable. But let's start off with the standard form of an exponential equation. We're actually going to use this to show you what I'm talking about right here. And we're going to apply this and we're going to make it into compound interest. So I would have y equals compound interest is a little bit different. And I, I, they probably wouldn't use that y there. They'd probably use an a for amount. We're going to say p, which is principal, much like a. It's the starting amount. And in here, generally what you see is a 1, which represents 100%. And then you have an interest rate of R divided by number of times compounded. Okay? So, again, if I had 100% interest rate, but I did it biannually, you got to break that up and do 50% twice a year, which would equal 100. And then out here, t as an exponent, we have the time times the number. And this is how many times your ratio or your interest is applied. So if I'm doing it biannually, my interest rate might get smaller, but I'm going to apply it more often to still equal what seems like 100%. But again, every time we break that up, our interest rate is earning interest. So let's study this, but we're going to study it with very specific numbers. So if I was going to study E, I would basically pick some things that make it easy to understand. When you study, I don't know, for example, if you're studying sine, cosine, tangent, you could study with a unit circle. The idea being, is if you make it a single unit, it's easier to understand the ratios that are involved. Well, same here. So we're going to say, instead of our principal, they're going to let our principal for this entire activity, and I'm going to rewrite it over here. We're going to let our principal be just $1. All right. We're going to let our entire rate be 1 right, which would be 100% growth, or the number 2 in here, right, 1 plus 1. And then we're going to let n vary. n is going to change. So I'm just going to put a little question mark, and we'll see what it equals here. Now, our time is going to be analyzed just for a single year. All right, our time is going to be analyzed just for a single year. And again, n is going to be a variable rate. Okay, so here's the deal. As I plug those in, remember the standard equation is going to be this. It's going to be y, or our output, is equal to 1, our original invested amount. All right. 1 plus our ratio. Our ratio is going to be 1 for a total of 200% over n. All right. And then we have t, which is going to equal 1. Now, let me erase that really quick. Adjustment. Can I center that? There we can. And then it's going to be 1 times n. And watch what this number turns into. Okay. Okay, here we go again. I um, can make a little chart here. And again, remember. N in this case is going to be the number of times compounded, and Y is going to be the output for our unit. So let's just start off that says, you know what? I'm going to compound it once at the end of the year. And if we do that, obviously, I'm going to be doubling my money. So it's going to be a 2. However, what if I compound it twice? And much like we drew out here, halfway through the year, you're going to um, apply interest, and then the next half of the year, well, you've already made 50 cents that you apply interest to again, and you get 225. 
you not only made your dollar, but you made a 25 cents extra. You made a quarter as much as you normally would just by choosing to compound that twice. Um, if I compound it three times, you might expect that it would grow by a quarter more. But in this case, you only go up to 3.37, so another 12 cents. And what we're going to see is we break this down into smaller and smaller increments. For instance, if I choose to compound monthly, all right, I would end up with around two dollars, and I should go up here and adjust this. Sorry, right, 2.37. I'm going to end up with around two dollars and 61 cents, and a pretty good growth. But I big growth there. But I've um, compounded it nine more times than the previous. What if I go ahead and, um, I don't know, let's pick a number like 365, which is compounding every single day of the year. If I compound every single day of the year, I've actually gone up another 10, right? But by compounding it over 300, um, well, 353 more times, I actually grew less within these numbers, right? 10, as I did between here when I compound it from 1 to 2. Well, you know, what it's doing is it's kind of behaving as a way that we see a lot of ratios that it is now approaching a limit. And let's put in a really, really large number. Let's put in a number that's 9999. Nine, nine, nine. Nine. So we got 99,999, and I'm going to see a number that is still at 2.71. This one's a little higher. It's almost 2.712. It's 2.718. And what I can see that if I compound all the time, that this number is quickly approaching a limit, and that limit is the number we call E. And the reason these numbers get really small is, is, you know, as your interval gets infinitesimally small, the amount of interest you're applying also does as well. So it would be like walking into the bank, depositing $100, walking out of the bank, turning around, walking back in, and asking the teller, how much money do you have in there? Well, they're still going to say, you know, you got the same amount that you did when you walked out of here three minutes ago. Because three minutes really isn't enough time to appreciate any meaningful interest. So, anyway, the concept of E is this number. So what the formula PERT does is it uses E as the base, right? Since E is based on kind of a ratio when you put a dollar in. And if I put in $10 in and I put a 10 out in front, so that would be my principal, that would adjust E to be equivalent to however much money you put in. Right? If E is based on a ratio with one dollar and I put ten out here, well ten times my ratio will give me a ratio and all ratios do is it doesn't matter whether it's one dollar or a thousand, right? A ratio applies to whatever situation that it, it it kind of skews itself up to whatever you put in. And then you have a rate up here. And again, since E was based on a rate of one hundred percent, right? Putting a ratio up here will reduce it. If it's 10%, it'll do 10% of E. If it'll 5%, it'll do 5% of E. All right, and then we can attack on time on the end, and we get kind of that shampoo formula, PERT, and that'll give us our final amount whenever we're dealing with anything that compounds continuously. Um, I hope you get a lot out of this video, and I will sign off now until later. Thanks a lot.